set, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh. in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit. The run will score, and freshman pull a check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Uh -huh. And we welcome you to Cougar Field here at Chatham High School, just off the campus of Chatham High School, for the MCTCA Polar Bear Meet uh, two-session event here. And we'll have the coverage for you on Mars Sussex Sports. We're glad you can join us. We've already had uh, a race under our belts uh, as they are just starting now. The boys' 55-meter hurdles with Michael, Hergen, uh, Michael Holden and Nagashken C. McCurdy get going the two of the lower seeds of course as it goes along the higher seeds will step out onto the track and get going most of them will be running events today we'll have uh, shot put elsewhere uh, they'll get going with that uh, just in the surrounding areas here at chatham high school but we're glad you can join us here on mars sussex sports in the blocks now we got another three here ryan harper in lane two, Henry Nyer in lane four, and Sebastian Viegas in lane six. All from Del Barton. Right before us, uh, Jack Pagurgan and Ian Tran also ran. So everything just uh, getting going here in short order here on Mars Sussex Sports as the next race underway. The timing mechanism on the track, or at least the display not working. So those three will go right on across. Gary Rosenberg is joining me. I'm Brent Luthner. And Gary, 55-meter hurdles. What are we looking forward to here uh, in this race, how it's run, and uh, what to look forward to as this race goes on? Well, I think uh, one thing to keep in mind is we are actually are an indoor track season, even though we're outside, uh, which is why we're running a 55 and not a, a normal 110 meters, what they would be doing for outdoor track. Um, I don't know if, with the cold weather and the wind out here, if we'll be seeing a whole lot of fast times. They're doing the calls for the girls in the 55 meters. There's 13 different sections of these 55 meter hurdles. Number four is underway and coming right down the middle here of Morris Knowles, Gregory Palma in lane number four. A lot of the players wearing what would be their indoor track uh, uniforms, if you will. Now on two and six, we got Elijah Bastos in lane two and Dylan Porio from Butler High School in lane six. Morris Knowles, representative in Elijah. Both of these had seed times of 10.5. And down to the line first, Elijah Bastos. And so as it goes along, you know, we're going to see the, the better times, the better seeds come through here uh, as it goes on. And, and that's done for a reason. So you have the, always have the fastest runners go on their last or latest heat. So as far as competition, they know what is coming for them. A little bit of a conversation at the line. Joseph Tevade in lane four. Morgan Araya out of Madison High School in lane six. Joseph out of the home site here, Chatham. First of five Chatham runners here in the 55 meter hurdles. As they both take their marks. 
No starting blocks for them here at the 55 meter hurdles. Even through the start and then pulling ahead here is Araya. As today caught a hurdle going by, and so there's the next. And again, this is all going to go very quick, Eric. As we're looking in further down the list, you're seeing the the, the better seated times. Morris Knowles, Del Barton, Marstown Beard got it. people in those last two two sections, if you will, those last two heats. You start to notice that as the heats get faster, probably not coincidentally, they go from wearing training shoes to spikes. Mm. You can run a lot faster in spikes than in training shoes, especially in the sprint. Even when you only have one going through, you will see that they you still got to run your times. Patrick O'Callaghan, the lone runner in this one. For most, if not all, this is their first meet of the year. Uh, yes, what uh, I was checking with a couple of the coaches. This is maybe they've had a dual meet before this. So most of these people at, at most, this is their second race this year. And there haven't been many races at all, really, in the last six months since cross country. So if these are strictly track people, which the hurdlers most likely are, they may not have raced in over a year. Two more going in this race. Ryan Chu out of Butler High School in lane two. Braden Loeffler in lane six out of Morris Knowles. And you're seeing Loeffler get off to the good start. And he'll pull ahead in this one. Chu not far behind him. Both came in with seed times of 9.8 seconds. Three stepping to the line now. It's Kelso's Chevaria in lane two from Butler High School and a pair of Del Barton runners. Anthony Implicito in lane four, Gabriel Benz in lane six. And again, COVID has spread the few, spread everything out a little bit in terms of where they are on the track. We have two sessions of this. This is the AM session. The PM scheduled to be around one o'clock. Of course, we'll have that for you here on Mars Sussex Sports as well. Good start by all three. And it looks like in lane six, Gabriel Benz gets to the line first, but a close race by all. Two more, a pair of Chatham runners, Quinn Newman in lane two, Thomas Highland in lane four. Of course, we've got the meet program, but not everybody is running today. Which I was talking to my friend last night and uh, Mars Sussex Sports commentator Sean Bretherick. And he would sometimes, well, this is a really good run out of lane four that by Thomas Highland. As we near the end of things here, Akesh Gandhi, not <clears throat> going in lane two, maybe. Akesh uh, Gandhi in lane two, the lone runner in this one. Looks like the Morristown Beer Tristan is in there too, lane six. Not getting the, uh, yep, Tristan Michia number is in lane number six. They got the bibs on their left legs. I wish they were on their right, but <laughs> it's what it is. Again, the clock on the field is not operational 
Oh, no, just the one runner in this race. So Gandhi will run through. If the clock is still not working for the longer races, we'll we'll try to time it ourselves so we can help give everybody an idea of what, what everyone's running. But for the sprints, it's harder to get a, yeah. a precise time. State record indoor variety, of course, for 55-meter hurdles, as you had mentioned, um, is 6.26, and it's co-held. Mario Heslop of Franklin <coughs> did it three years ago. Demir Bird, seven years before that. And a lot of the records that are state records were also set at meets outside of the state. You saw some Penn Relays, some Pan Am Games type of records. A pair of runners here. And on the outside, Matt Lapriti, number six. Paulino Jin, number two, was on the was in the uh, lane two, I should say. Matt Lapriti is in lane six, and Lapriti gets to the line first. And this is the final one, and this will be the fastest ones. Ethan Cho of Del Barton in lane two. Conover, Kevin Conover in lane four from Morris Knowles, as well as Cameron Dupree Kemp. Arsenal's in lane six. And as you were saying, Gary, this is where you see the guys wearing the spikes and everything. And this will probably be a good good sprint between these three. It should be a good one. Uh, they, they, they all three have the fastest seeds. I don't think anybody will be coming close to that state record, not in this cold weather with all this clothes on. We've had a pretty successful uh, 55 for the boys with not one person falling so far. And we'll get through that, although a couple stumbles and maybe getting to the line first was Dupree Kemp in lane six. Ethan Cho in lane two gave him a good run as well. But that is all the running in the 55-meter hurdles for the boys, the girls to come up short. And you will, again, they, they move these things along quickly, you know, but as we get to the larger, the longer distances, then, you know, obviously they will get uh, a little bit longer in the actual event themselves. Now you came out of Morris Hills, so seeing some of the Morris Hills runners go at it, uh, what'd you think of their performances out there? So uh, it's actually Morris Knowles here. Um, mm -hmm. The enemy of Morris Hills. Yes, that's right. Except, <laughs> I you see, I keep forgetting because in hockey they're combined. Are they? Yes. I wouldn't know that. Morris Knowles, Morris Hills, one of the best public school teams in the state, too. Well, we will be at Morris Hills uh, for their version of this meet next week. There you go. That's why I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm so used to Morris Knowles and Morris Knowles Hills, as we call them in hockey. Really? Yeah. Not enough people for one team, I'm guessing. Yeah, no, that's uh, that was the case. I think Hills was the one that had very few, and Knowles had the most because they were all in uh, Knowles jerseys this year. Uh, Knowles is the bigger of the two schools. Six sections out of this one. Section Check that five. We found out there's only five sections on this. Anya Sadowski will be in lane two out of Parsippany Hills, and she'll join a pair of Butler runners, Ava Sorge in lane four now, and Leanne Devlin in lane six. Well, that might be switched around, actually. Ava might be in lane six. This is where I bust out the binoculars to try to see a, a bib number on the leg. Oh, never mind. We've got one runner coming here. That was uh, Megan Devink number in the uh, number one ninety two on the bib in lane four. Now we'll get Sadowski, Asorgi, and Devlin. Oh, 
All three of them trying to stay warm on the track right now. It is cold down there. 36 degrees when we started this meet. As everybody will take their marks. It will be getting hot today. That will be getting almost up to 50. Yeah, we'll definitely warm up, and we'll probably be shedding some layers as we go along as well. And Devlin, I believe that was charging down the middle in lane four. Looks like, uh, oh, check that. We had, that was Sonali Shastri, Jordan Valentin, lane four to charge the head, and Callie Rappaport in lane six. So we were all sorts of off on that one. Samantha Fieldhouse in lane two. Grace Kugelman in lane four. Caitlin Walter in lane six. And Fieldhouse taking... The lead on this one will head on home. Now brings up last two heats coming up here, last two sections, if you will. Elizabeth Hur out of Chatham here in lane two, and uh, Emma Kasiorowski, uh, if I pronounced that right, I apologize if I didn't, in lane number four. Not racing. And there's one not racing in this one. Kasiorowski deciding to go for, hasn't got into her start yet. She's opting for the standing start as Elizabeth Her will take her marks down low. Without, as Kasiorowski comes down the middle, and she'll take this heat over her. Is there any difference, really, especially when you don't have starting blocks between going down to take your marks and coming from stand up? Uh, well, the blocks are going to give you a, a, a stronger, faster start. So you're not going to run as fast if you're if you're going to not use these blocks. Just like you're going to run faster if you have the spikes on, which as we get into the faster heats, they're all wearing spikes. Spikes will make you run faster. Blocks will, blocks will make you run faster. Last one, Hannah Schofield in lane two. Lauren Clark, lane four. Elise Panag Panagakos, I should say, in lane six. Mars Catholic and a pair of Chatham girls in this last heat. After a good start coming right down the middle. Is expected somewhat there. Lauren Clark across the line first. She had an 8.73 time that was registered in for this meet. I would say overall we had a pretty successful hurdles. Um, mm -hmm. Not one person fell. Yeah, that's always a good thing. It's rare. Some people will watch this just to watch people fall. Just like they'll watch steeplechase, not in high school, to see who, who's going to fall right. over the water jump. Yeah, who, who's going to get the <laughs> splash landing, if you will. So if you were looking for falls, we that's the proverbial sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so the next event up is the 800. And uh, since the clock is not working, I will try to read off some splits as people come through. Gary, as, we, as I was saying, Morris Hills graduate. Track and field when you ran at Morris Hills. <clears throat> so track, track's been in your blood pretty much for a long, long time. Yes, long time. I, with, I'm a pretty old guy. <laughs> I, I might be matching you in age, my friend. <laughs> um, I graduated in 89 from Morris Hills. Yeah, I'm not far behind you. I'm only 92. All right. But I was Paramus, and I did not run track. I could run, but I couldn't run. Uh, I, was not a, I, was a, I was a hockey guy. All right. So it looks like we have eight people in this first heat. Um, I have information. One of the coaches is feeding me information about his, some of his kids. So there you go. What I'm told for Jack Tobin from Del Barton is that he's deathly afraid of birds. 
We all have our fears. <laughs> For me, it's bridges. You going over them? Over them, yeah. So this is the first of four, uh, four sections of the 800. Yes. We have a fastest heat, fastest seed of this heat of 240. But as you go along, you'll start seeing the 220s come in and the 210s. And finally, the last one, the best time is Colin Bowler's 203 coming into the heat. I've been informed he will not be racing the 800. Hmm. Jack Tobin, Nagakishin Simakurdi, Riley Quirk, both of those last two guys from Parsippany Hills, Piquanix uh, Chris Cunha, back to Parsippany for Jason Rosen and Marcello Diodario, Marstown Beards, William Kuppenheimer, and Joey Lesh out of Piquanix are the eight in this race. <clears throat> they have gotten off to the start and for the first time I bust out well the second time really I bust out the binoculars to see how I, uh, going. I have time going so I'll try to give around 200 meter splits and early on in this one it is Kuppenheimer beard. with the lead and he's going through to 200 in 32 very fast considering the seeds here and similar to those that, that there might be some viewers that are, that are into horse racing a bit it's you could sometimes somewhat see a similar strategy you know in terms of how fast the times are or whatnot well if these guys unless they're in much better shape than their seed time you see a lot of slowing down at the end of this Or maybe they were sandbagging their times. It's coming through the quarter in 70. Bell has gone off. So he's on pace for 220. And who is this? Is that the. That's he's William got a seat time of 250. Yeah. It looks like he's got a pretty strong gait going on there, too. Although, he's slowing down. There is, can't see the bib number, but there is one guy trying to catch up. So let's make it interesting. Guy in second is going to catch the guy in first. So guy in second, looks like he is, uh, it could be a Parsippany. Yeah, there's a few of those in this race, but it might be. We will call him guy in second. The bib numbers are not being displayed here is we do know the one Marstown beard runner William Kuppenheimer rounds the corner he's holding strong yeah he's got a good strength a good gate going on here I know this Parsippany Hills in second I don't see a number so he's going to crush his C time looks like around about a 232 about a 234 for second both of them Pretty much blew out the seed times. Coming through in 244, 247. We have one left on the track. Jack Tobin to finish things up. I think he was worried about the uh, birds. 258. Right around his seed time. A little bit better than his seed time, actually. But that'll be... The first, and now six more come up here. Scheduled for this one. As everybody finds their way through. The scheduled runners have been Andy Chabra, Michael McCarthy, out of Marstown Beard and Mars Catholic, respectively, Everett Jania, and Regan Cran out of Del Barton. It's looking like only one of them is in. Tyler Cobb from Madison, Dan Voigt from Mars Catholic, Eric Ackerman out of West Mars, Sean Mulligan from Mars Catholic, and 
Murad Alim from Parsippany Hills. Those are the scheduled runners. Of those nine, we just see six. And we have a clock going now, so everybody should be able to see the splits going on. Taking this one out hard. Man, it was a real hard run to start. Coach says he's going to run a lot better in his C time. He says he might break two minutes. <laughs> I say, he went uh, through pretty quick in 30, so he's on pace for breaking two. Will he hold it? First of two laps, of course. Eric Ackerman out of West Morris in the lead. And a whole host coming from behind. He's through in uh, a sub-60. He's looking strong. Murat Aleem is in second right now out of Parsippany Hills. With one to go. and This is it, Eric in first? Yep. Ackerman like, in first. and Looks like he's sandbagging. Should have been in a faster heat. I mean, this is looking like Secretariat right now. Because Ackerman does not showing, is not showing any signs he of He has run down. fairly even. He's at 131 at 600, so he's pretty run very even. I'm going to predict a 204. Meantime, in second, Murad Alim is going to get caught. Tyler Cobb about to pass him and does. Ackerman, in the meantime, will come across the finish line. And 204. 204, yeah. Back down for second here, and Tyler Cobb well ahead of the field. Aleem has been caught, and here comes a series of runners after him. Dan Voigt could not hold on uh, for that fourth spot in this heat. But still, the 204 out of Eric Ackerman taking care of business there. And now we'll get a fresh batch of runners for this third section of four. I want to thank all our sponsors that you see scrolling in the top right corner of your screen. Seven were running this. The schedule run, there was supposed to be 12 in this race. Seven are going. There's more up in this stagger start further up. Uh -huh. So it's looking like 11. All right, 11 of the 12. Justin Hoffman and, you tell, and Yash Patel out of Parsippany Hills, Matthew Trokolar out of Pequannock, Joseph Henderson from Butler, Thomas Kelson, Morris Catholic, a pair of Morris Knowles runners in Will Burke and Braden Berseo, Del Barton's David Collini in this uh, section, Henrik Hamilton out of Madison, Parsippany Hills for Corey Wechsler, uh, Wexler, I should say, uh, Tyler Spillane out of Morris Knowles, and Madison's Mark Sue, the scheduled runners, of the 12, 11 are going at it. Fastest seed is 214, which is 10 seconds slower than a winning time from the last heat. For those wondering, the state record has been <laughs> in place since 1980. John Marshall of Plainfield ran a 148.44. And that record has not been busted since a bit of trivia if anybody's listening can, and want to type in we'll have to check it out there's been somebody from this county who had a national had the national sophomore record for about a dozen years um anybody knows the answer 
and what school in the person's name, they will win five Gary Bucks. <laughs> First of two laps here as they make their way around the track. And do not have bib numbers on them. It's a tight race up top to start. Looks like Yash Patel is right up there. Going through in 64, a little fast. Big group, see if they can all stay together. First call for girls, In the background, they're calling first call for the girls, 800 coming up. By the way, we got some viewers in Brazil. Glad they can all join us here on Mars Sussex Sports. Nobody's answering the uh, former national sophomore record holder for Morris County. I'll give it to the end of the final section before I give the answer. Pair of Morris Knowles runners coming through the stretch here in section three. Two eleven. People are running a lot faster than their seat times. That's good. They've well, been probably waiting to run a race. Mm. Will Burke and Brandon Berseo out ahead of the pack there. And now one more to go. We see in the chat Elijah Bastos, who ran in the 55-meter hurdles, had the fan club out in Brazil. So we're in the final heat here of the 800. And the boys' 800's got – this one's got uh, nine, I believe. Brian Buller from Del Barton, Luca Okuzu from Marstown Beard, Jack Murphy from Del Barton, Cameron Brown out of West Morris, Colin Bowler from Del Barton, Patrick Grasso from Chatham, as well as Charles Henney, and in Madison's Christopher Scapati and Pat Hanley are scheduled in this race, but we've been told the bowler's not going to be running. I believe the, the bowler twins are both not running. So Brian as well. There's Five of them on the line. A couple others that are scratched from this one. And they have gotten started. Looks like a pair of Chatham, a pair of Madison. And they might be running with a West Mars. Looks like a Marstown beard. They're coming through the 200 in 27. Good time. As the field has spread out here. So nobody has commented on the former national sophomore record holder for Morris County. So I will provide the answer. It was uh, Morris Hills alumni, Fred Bronner, ran 150 to take third place in the state championships with John Marshall winning that year. Sophomore 150, national record. Gone through the first bits, uh, the first lap of this here. Marstown Beard Runner, Luca Okuzu. Trying to battle, but it's the pair of Chatham runners up front in this one, Patrick Grasso and Charles Henney. It looks like the fastest race for the our 800 this this meet might be from our, our first heat. Or yeah. was it the second heat? Second. Unless he can run sub 30 for his last 200. Well, 
Looks like he's trying to dig down for a little bit extra as he rounds the corner here and comes down the final stretch. Oh, we have the clock going. There we go. It's it, wrong, but at least it's on. Yep, that's a start. 209. The rest of the field will come on in to finish out the boys' 800 meters. Now the girls' 800 meters is going to come into play here, or at least they, they're trying to get the clock to work. We've got two heats of the girls. First one has 11 listed in the program, but there's definitely not 11 coming to the line. The seats for the people entered in this first section are between 249 and 320. One late addition to it here. We'll have 11. Seeing now that some of the girls are putting numbers up on their shoulders. First multi-team meet of the season. So you would expect there to may maybe be a little bit of confusion as they get ready to go. Let me find the results. We got it. Yep, no worries. Elijah Bastos gets sixth place. Ethan Cho gets the win in the 55 meter hurdles. As <laughs> both of us are trying to find. few meets going on today in the state. Not as, finding it. As we continue the effort to try to find the... Uh, Valentin. In fourth place, 
Cubs are still trying to find Ah, there we go. I found it. Had to go to the schedule. So, as it's being announced now, 55 meters as the girls are getting going. Ethan Cho had an 8.46, which was first. Cameron Dupree Kemp had an 8.49, which got second. Thomas Highlands. 851 got him third. That was the top three uh, for the boys. On the girls' side is we have uh, the winner was Lauren Clark at an 887. Elise Panagakos, both of them out of Chatham. And Elise Panagakos, a 961, got seventh. Hannah Schofield, a 974, third. Uh, for your top three. Four runners did not make the start on the girls' side as this is underway here. Looks like they still don't have their clock working, but we have ours. Unofficial. One of two <coughs> heats here in the girls' 800. Angie Wilson of Neptune holds the state record. Two minutes, point ninety one seconds. Just missed out on the sub two. 800, which <laughs> I believe that was a um, under 18 world record or national yes. record. Yes. Yeah, that was in Barcelona, too, is what I was looking up. First of two laps here. They do have numbers on there pinned on to them, so we'll be able to see. Coming through a 114. Did that sound perfect? 400 meter dash. Please report to the infield. First call. Two of All these two the here. 400 meter dash. Please report to the infield. Looks like we're going to get a takeover on that back stretch there. Isabel Spagnolo and Ava Fikidi with Spagnolo taking over for the lead here and we come down for the stretch on this. The first of two sections in the girls' 800. Check that. Uh, yeah, you're right. That is Ava. Fakiti took over Spagnolo. I had, I had him reversed. But Fakiti coming down. She'll pull ahead. Now pulling into second. That's Emily Jones out of Madison. Everybody else West coming Morris through. Moving up too. And so heat number one concludes. We'll get the second one going on shortly. I will say this is much refreshing that there's nobody arguing about calls. <laughs> I will say that there is a ton of support. No one's arguing about calls or any of that nonsense. It's just the athletes on the track or in the shot put elsewhere on the grounds here. And so now on to the 800 main event, if you Up will. Next on the track, the 
the final heat of the girls' 800-meter run. I'm scheduled Second for it. and final call. All boys in the 400-meter run, please report to the infield. Scheduled for this one. Run, Emily Stevenson from Mars Knowles. Ashley Smith out of Chatham. Shannon Caratura out of West Mars. Sophia Danzo out of Madison. Chelsea Cochran from West Mars. Amanda Hoffman out of Parsippany. At Parsippany Hills. Sydney Howell from Madison. Lisa Velvia from... Uh, Vavia, I should say, out of Mars Catholic, and Alexa Lee from Chatham. Those are scheduled, but we see seven on the line. We haven't seen any battles yet. Mm. All these races have been pretty much the same person winning from the whole way. So I, I feel like this is going to be a good battle. Well, good, interesting gonna race to watch. Adjust your microphone just a little bit there. Gotcha. As we are off and running here. In the second of the two. Come on, oh, yeah, that looks like it's the assigned lane four of Shannon Caratura in the lead, as we'll get a better look at them as they come around the, the corner here. Caratura is still in the lead on this one. Again, number seven of Amanda Hoffman right there. Sydney Howell wearing the number eight. Alexa Lee wearing the number 10. As they all come across the first time. And now you're starting to see the fade it's a little be a bit. Good, good race coming through in 113. Caratura might get overtaken here. Go around. We got four people battling for first right now. Caratura still holding it, though not by much. That's Hoffman in second. Caratura still holding on to that lead. Hoffman trying to dig down for a little extra here. Almost looks like it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game. Who's gonna have a four still in here with 200 to go. Looks like it's gonna be between Caratour and Hoffman. Although there is some other company. Caratour has led throughout. Hoffman trying to keep. Now a run on the outside here. It here like goes Alexa Chatham. Lee. I think Chatham's going to take it. Chatham's not going to take it. Lee it's was getting a Nothing's run. Nothing's going to change in the last 50 meters. But it's going to be coming down the stretch. Shannon Caratura out of West Morris to take first in this heat. Battle at the back end of things as well. But Caratura held on to get the win there. Probably the, the most competitive race we've seen so far today. Mm. That was a good one. You, you saw you saw the back and forth in that last race in, in Caratura trying to hold everything off. Yeah, it looked like um, there would be some changes in places at the end, but everybody held their, their place with the last 100 meters. Amanda Hoffman was trying to make a run. You saw Alexa Lee come on the outside. You almost... Got a sense it might go three wide down the stretch, but you know, in the end, Shannon Caratour just enough to win. Got the 400 coming up next with 11, 11 heats. They'll all stay in lanes for this one. Running on the track now, heat one of 11 for the boys' 400 meter dash. Dashes stay in lanes. As looks like we are underway with this one. Richard Rylander, Sebastian Hill, Caleb Ordauer, and 
Abinov, Naidu, two Pequonics, a Marstown Beard, and a Del Barton, respectively. But do not see four out there, just the three. So they're coming around here, and that's an overtake. Two Pequonic runners coming down here. That's Sebastian Hill who took over from Richard Rylander. And then the Crimson's Caleb Ordauer will come across the line behind the others. And that's going to conclude heat number one. Section two's got six scheduled to run in it. Ryan Boone, Jake Donza, and Kelso Tavaria all out of Butler. Brian Huang from Parsippany Hills, Everett Jania out of Del Barton, and Pequonix, Mateo Torres, scheduled in this one. Everybody seated at 68 seconds. Thank you very much, Tyler, for the kind words. We're glad to be here covering this Polar Bear Invitational here at Chatham High School. They're off and running. Four on the track for this. Just the one lap with the staggered starts. Good run down the back stretch here. Running on the track now, heat two of the boys, 400 meter dash. Coming around down this last stretch. Brian Huang of Parsippany Hills is going to take this one. And then Butler will fight for two, three, four, but a good run there by Brian Huang. So everybody ran under their seat times, so it was a good thing to see. Section three, heat three, if you will. Henry Nyer out of Del Barton, Max Steinberg and Liam McDermott from Pequonic, Gavin McAvoy out of Marstown Beard, Gabriel Benz out of Del Barton, and Luca Tutella from Marstown Beard. We'll go at it here. They're scheduled to at least. And we're now waiting for everybody else to line up. Oh, we're only seeing three out there. Lanes one, two, and six as they get going here. And so it's Henry Nyer, Max Steinberg, and Luca Tutella. You're hearing some. People cheering for Max in the background. Aunt Maria and Uncle Nano rooting for Elijah Bastos. Out of Brazil, I believe. This one's gonna come down and Max Steinberg well in advance. Henry Nyer in second. Luca Tutella coming up, but this one will go to Steinberg. And quite often, though, yeah, you know, these athletes, they do want to defeat each other, but they're also trying to defeat their own personal times. If they continue to get to the, the, the last seat, the fastest seats, 
they want to run fast and win. A lot of these guys are just trying to run new records. Pretty early in the season to be running a new PR, though. Unless you're a senior, you're talking about a PR from the previous years. And State record, by the way, in the boys' 400 meters belongs to Clayton Paros, the Seton Hall prep at the uh, state meet. State championships back in 2009, where he ran a 45.71. Odds of that coming through here. Not so good. No. Nope. I wonder what the official thing would be if somebody did run that fast today. Would it count as an indoor record or an outdoor record? That's a very good I, – I would venture to say an outdoor record. Uh, it, just because we're running it outdoors. That, I, that would be my guess. I would go with you're probably correct. I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. Pretty good run here going on by Andrew Zucker in lane three. Now will he hold on to it? Lane two of Aaron Morton, Mars Town Beard, <clears throat> trying to make things interesting. Jack Pegrigan <clears throat> from Del Barton in lane six, the other runner on the track. And, and here it goes. Wow. That was a sprint on down the stretch and moving ahead is Aaron Morton. Looks like we might have our first sub 60. Will he have enough to Just make it? Just missed it. Mm. Ends up being a 101. We'll see if that holds up. Good time that at a 101, and it's in time for for the next. Although you got you got some others coming. As we get ready for this next heat. Lanes three through six will be put into employ here as far as they're lining up. Ryan Harper would be the lane three. Ryan Trocolar in lane four. Zach Levine in five. And James Iorio in six. Early on, because of those staggered starts, you would expect lane six to visually be in the lead, but that doesn't mean that they are. Although, that's lane a, six looks that, like they're going that's the fast. That's a good though. one. Yeah. James Aorio just, the gun went off and almost looked like he was shot out of it. Can he continue to pace, though? If he holds it up, he'll be our first sub 60 for the day. We are almost done with the stagger, and he's still holding on. Coming down the stretch, Iorio is out of that turn, and he is definitely holding on. Iorio, although out of four, here Ooh, goes Trocolar. Trocolar coming get him. down on four. And Trocolar will pass and take this one. Ooh, it looks like a 59. Iorio came out flying, but his teammate Ryan Trocolar caught him at the end. Yeah, that's another thing. You're either trying to run a fast time today, but if you're running against your teammate, you want to beat your teammate. <laughs> Results for the boys' 800 meter run. I was mentioning earlier Eight about one of our broadcast partners Madison, here on Mars Sussex Sports, Sean Brotherick. He, as he said, he, I was the backup shot beat. put guy. In so place, if they needed someone Morris else to do the shot put, I'd get in there and because that's what he did. He was in high school, ju sophomore, in and junior years. From Chatham, in a time Just in case the team needed to qualify, Grosso, I guess for team points or whatnot. In third place from so Morris he would Knowles, just he would suck it up and go ahead. Now, of course, when he was Braden throwing, Garcia. there was a, there was a guy in, in the state by the name of Nicholas Vina who was oh yeah, he's got all kinds of <laughs> state and national records. He was halfway decent at the shot. He was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he has the national record. It may have changed since then, but he had the national record. Maybe probably still does in freshman, sophomore, and junior year. Yeah. He also had the record for most throws over. I think it was seventy. Yeah, he had ninety-six of them. I could be mistaken, but I believe he's a gym teacher at 
Whippany Park? Somewhere in the, in the county. Uh, that would be insane if he was. But I remember Sean Brotherick saying anytime he was throwing, you got up close to watch him. <laughs> and coming around the turn here. In this section six is sixth heat. It is the lane three of Elijah Bastos who's ahead. Will he get reeled in is the question. Ed Malinowski trying to, but will not be able to. Hogan Hyatt as well in there. But Elijah Bastos pulls ahead for the win here uh, in this heat. Not necessarily the entire meet, but at least for that race, he, he was first across the line. Which will make Aunt Mari and Uncle Nano very happy. Well, let's get going on for this seventh out of 11 heats. <coughs> Times just get faster. This heat is uh, 60 or 61 seat time. Looks like everyone's running around their seat times right now. Lanes two through five being used here. Christopher Farman in lane two out of West Mars. Morgan Araya in lane three out of Madison. Paulino Jin out of Del Barton in lane four. And Hogan Hyatt. I'm going to go five. with this heat being one of <clears throat> 58. Gregory Palma, by the way, was in the previous, not Hyatt, as I had mentioned. <clears throat> this looks like a close one coming down. Optically, it looks like Hyatt's in the lean, but in reality, it's probably going to be very tight as they come around to this final stretch. Or never Madison mind. Front. <laughs> never mind, because Morgan Araya just turned on the afterburners. And Araya looking comfortable in his running, too. Fifty-nine. Very good run out of Morgan Araya in heat number seven. Results from the girls' 800 meter run. In sixth as place from Morris, as Catholic, it's being announced, the time of 243.01. Lisa, the girls' Bay 800 Hill. meter run being Fifth announced place over the from Chatham system in now. A time of 242.97. Ashley Smith. Ashley in Smith got fifth from Madison. Sydney Howell get fourth place at 230. At, uh, sorry, Howell. 238. In third place, Alexa Lee, Chad, well below her seat time, gets third place. Amanda Hoffman's 236 got second. Uh, but Shannon Caratura, we saw that last race and how good that was, and she held off her competition. She held off everybody and gets the first place here. Shannon Caratura. So Caratura gets the win. As this next heat is underway, we'll give you the boys' numbers in a moment. Three going on in this one. And it lo almost looks like the stagger that they started at, too. Only four were scheduled in this. Three of them from Adele Barton and Mars Catholic. Mars Catholic runners in there. That's Jane and Roney in lane three. But lane four, Robert Presti starting to pull. Lane two, Sebastian Viegas also in there. But it's going to be Presti in front. Presti to the finish line ahead of Roney. So they're going officially around another 59. So we're getting a bunch of 59s coming through now. By the way, the top five in the boys' 800-meter run, Will Burke, 
finished fifth with a 213.84. Patrick Grosso at Chatham, 213.15, got fourth. Braden Bruseo, a 212.42, ran in third. Charles Henney from Chatham, that was Mars Knowles for Bruseo. Charles Henney out of Chatham, a 209.93. And then Eric Ackerman, we saw his run, 205. Four seconds, over four seconds, almost five. 205.07. Added a slow heats. Yeah, added a slow heats. And he gets the burst. Lanes two, three, and four being, uh, one, two, three, and four being put in on this one. CJ Moore running out of lane one. William Hagerstrom out of lane two. Uh, Mars Knowles and Madison, respectively. Marstown Beard, Spencer Anderson in lane three. Madison's Michael Keller in lane four. Lane five was Jack Murphy. Max Capallo, lane six. Those are the scheduled runners. We have five of them here. And you're seeing some moves being made on that back stretch. Coming around the scoreboard corner, scoreboard turn, if you will. Lane four, Michael Keller still in the lead. Will he hold on? His teammate, William Hagerstrom, trying to catch him, but I don't think he's going to. It'll be Keller to the line. Hagerstrom second. Looks to be about a 55 second. And Spencer Anderson will get third out of that. Times are starting to pick up. They'll pick up even more in this one. Now you got seed time sub 57 the rest of the way. One, two, three, four, and six. So that's Tom Carney out of Mars Knowles, Cameron Brown from West Mars, Luca Akuzu out of Marstown Beard, <coughs> Charles Henney from Chatham, and Sebastian Hughes as you go over to lane six. Nobody in, or is that, nobody in lane five, or is that, yeah, nobody's in lane yeah, five's five. Five's open. So. All right, that was the. Running on the track now, eight, 10 of 11 for the boys, 400 meter dash. You got the, the speedsters coming up soon. Uh, these these guys are field. burning it as well. Yeah. The 400 meter dash. Uh, lane two. Lane Cameron two is Brown. Wes Morris. Cameron Brown getting on his giddy up a little bit. And then he slowed it down a bit as they come around the scoreboard turn. But Brown, and just as, as soon as I say that, he's got the stride going again. Cameron Brown, who had a seed time of 55.69 seconds. And he is trying to win this out. Coming down on lane six, Sebastian Hughes trying to make it interesting, but it'll be Brown. About 54. And now we'll see if that's going to hold up as the top. It's a good time in this weather. Yeah. I'll get ready. These uh, so some of these guys the look like their legs are the built like thoroughbreds. Only seeing two lanes in use though. One in five. Those are you met and one in four, I should say. Aiden Bergen in one, Matthew Sales in four. By the way, it is getting very warm out here now. It is thirty seven degrees. That said well relatively speaking. <laughs> We got two Madison people in this race. A lot of scratches. I'm going to predict uh, Madison will win it. <laughs> I think Madison's going to get second in this one, too. On the outside is Sales. On the inside is Bergen. We'll see how they run against each other. Bergen came in with a seed time of 54 and a half, 53.9 for Sales. So the two runners not that far apart. It's going to be a tight one. Here's Sales in the lead. Bergen not going to catch him. 
Sales running very strong here down the stretch, and he's going to win this one. It's about a 52, 53. And Sales will probably win the meet, win the overall 400 with that run. Event <coughs> five is finished. It's on to event number six. Six sections of the girls 400. Six out of, well, 12 events here on the track. There's also shot put going on. Looks like they still haven't fixed the clock at the, on the track level. Yeah. Still efforting to do that as well. Looks like we got all six lanes being used, I believe. I don't see someone in lane six. Okay. I Up thought, next on the thought I might have been hidden girls, behind somebody else, but you're correct. There will be six sections. Jordan Valentin in lane one, Anya Sadowski in lane two, <coughs> Ashley Allison in lane three, Anna Kugelman in lane four, and Samantha Koo. Lane five, Butler Parsippany, Parsippany Hills that is, Mars Knowles, Parsippany Hills, and Mars Knowles, the schools represented. And boy, oh boy, that is a run out of lane two for Anya Sadowski. Seed time's coming in around 115 or 116 reported, but. Uh, Valen Valentin? Jordan Valentin looks to be oh, yeah, lane Valentin. one, Sorry, way yeah. ahead. I thought she two. started the furthest back yep. with the stagger. It looks like it's catching up to her, though. Uh, she got off to a flying start. Now the question's going to be, will anybody catch up to her? She's yes. going to hold off of this. Valentin well ahead. And sees the finish line and put in a little extra kick as she's going along. She's going to be well under her seat time. Ashley Allison second. Anya Sadowski third as they come across the line. <coughs> So heat number one done, and now the next set of ladies coming up for number for heat number two, section number two, if you will. Five scheduled, three on the track. Lanes two and three open. Emily Stevenson out of lane one from Mars Knowles. Iorio uh, or Teresa Iorio, I should say, uh, out of lane two from Bequanic, and Leanne Devlin from Butler in lane three. Uh, that's lane four and five, I should say. Again, you're just... Everybody laying it out here for this one lap around the track. Well, that's a blazing run on the inside right now by Stevenson. Emily Stevenson, per the proverbial picking them up and laying them down. She may have to stagger in about the first 100 meters, see if she can hold on too. Heading into the scoreboard turn, just widening her lead is Emily Stevenson. Now it's just going to be a matter of what time is going to finish. Her seed time was 114.02 coming in. She'll be well under that. Iorio starting to make a move. But. No, oh, check that. That's uh, Leon Devlin, I believe. Yeah, I was Devlin making the move, but. Well ahead, Stevenson in that one.
First call, all boys in the 1600 meter run. Please report to the infield number 50 yard line. First call, all boys. Section three stepping up run. now. Please report to the infield by the 50 yard line. And we've got five out of six going in this one. Lane five is the open one. Emma Torkelson out of Madison, uh, Madison in lane one. Her brother played on the football team. I remember calling a couple of those games this year. Callie Rappaport in lane two. Kate Brea in lane three. Leanne Lombardi in four. And Samantha Fieldhouse in six. As we said, lane five is open. Seed times between 112 and 113. And again, there's in these in these early uh, in these early heats, these early sections, you're seeing someone just fly out to the start. I think with the, a lot of this being people's first races, they're still getting their feet underneath them. We'll call this the rust buster. Uh, or maybe the ice busters, since getting the ice off them is so it's cold out. A lot of people are also running faster in their seat times because they're probably going off the times that they ran last year. As they come around the scoreboard turn, that explosion at the beginning is helped propel lane four's Leanne Lombardi. Lombardi will stay with the lead here down the stretch. Torkelson second, Bria third. And Rapport and Fieldhouse will finish things out. Looks like lane four is the open one on this one. So Sydney St. Jacques out of lane one, Avery McDonough out of lane two, Nicole Nash in three, Chloe Higgins lane five, Sam, uh, Samita Satish in lane six, West Mars, a pair of Mars Knowles, Mars Town Beard, and Mars Catholic in this race. Or in this heat, I should say. Stagger is held so far in this one. This is a tough one to call. I'm going to go with uh, lane five. Yeah, well, I was about to say, Chloe Higgins has looked like she's picked it up in that back stretch and, in fact, has Seven. taken the lead. Final call. All boys in the 1600 Higgins out of Marstown Beard, whose seed time was 111 and a half. Comes around out of lane five. Will she be able to hold on? Because lane three is charging, and that's Nicole Nash. Higgins and Nash. Should be able to hold on at this point. And maybe Nash, break 70. Yep. Yeah, Nash is going to run out of room. Higgins takes the heat. Come on, lady. Down to the final two heats of the 400 for the girls. Boys, 400 is in. Michael Keller of Madison, 55.89 is fifth. Charles Henney's 55.12 was fourth. Sebastian Hughes, 55.03 got third. Cameron Brown, 54 and a half got second. And a 53.49 out of Matthew Sales from Madison gets the top spot. 
the junior from Madison High School. It's a good time for early in the season in this cold weather. It's harder to run the sprints or the faster races when it's this cold. For distance runners, it's not as bad. Five to the start here. Looks like lane six is the one open. Gabrielle Bruns in lane one out of Madison. Shannon Caratour, who won earlier in West Mars in lane two, will keep an eye on her. Adam Maselli, lane three. Allison Angley in lane four, West Mars, and Kara Hoffman, West Mars, in lane five. And right now in lane one, it's Gabrielle Bruns. And she'll take this one. Lane five of Kyra Hoffman finishes second, and Shannon Caratura gets third in this heat. Michael Keller. In fourth place from Chatham with a time of 55.12, Charles Henney. In third place, and the last West one Morris for the girls, 400. <coughs> Sebastian Hughes in second place from West Morris. With a time Looks of like all six of them are in this. Cameron Brown. And your I think this is the first time we've had all six with a time today. Of Matthew Sales. We have some pretty fast seed, so maybe all six will push each other, see if we get somebody under 60. Fastest seed time is 61 seconds from Chatham's Jessica Vespasiano. Alice Spina is in lane one from Chatham. Phoebe Patterson from Pequannock in lane two. Jessica Vespasiano in lane three from Chatham. Maya Lee in lane four, also Chatham. Hannah Scopefield, Mars Catholic in lane five, and Vanya Gould, lane six out of Mars Catholic as well. Vespasiano, if I'm mistaken, I think she's also on the soccer team here at Chatham. And they are flying out. Vespasiano in lane three is getting a move on here. Stagger still holding, though that might not be lasting long. Vespasiano as well as Maya Lee. Charging around the turn here, going to the scoreboard side of this track. He's holding strong. I don't think she'll be breaking 60 today, but no. it looks like about a 62 maybe. Coming down, it's going to be... Vespasiano and Maya Lee one two to finish things out. It's a good run overall. Back at the boys, sixteen hundred three sections. Up next on the track is the boys 1600 meter run. There will be three sections of the boys 1600 meter run. Of course, staggered starts may be a bit prevalent in this one, we'll see. Section one's got 12 scheduled to be in, but it doesn't mean all of them will be. Jack Tobin out of Del Barton, Marcello Dario out of lane two. Well, is another one out of Parsippany Hills, I should say. Butler's Tyler Wagner and Luke Marion are in as well. Mars Catholics, Sean Mulligan and Dan Voigt. Del Barton's Everjania. Mars Town Beards, William Kuppenheimer. Jason Rosen and Riley Quirk got a Parsippany Hills. Chatham's Ryan Barry and Nagishin Seema Curdy. Uh, Nagakishin Seema Curdy, I should say, out of Parsippany Hills. So four Parsippany Hills runners in this one. We'll get going in a matter of moments. So we've got four laps in 1600. Um, most people don't, not everybody realizes a mile 1600 are not the same. No. 60, 1600 is shorter. A mile would be 1,609 meters. So 
so, and off they go. It's again, 1,600, so it is four laps around the circuit. Back on here is the first of four go laps going on. So you have C times from 5.23 up to just below 6.30 for this first heat. Going through the first quarter's sub five pace. Base off C times a little fast. Head around here first time around. I hear George Muha somewhere in the distance. Coming around here again, this is the first of four laps. Now, 1,600 meters, obviously, the, you know, close to a mile. What are you looking for out of this race from the runners? Well, um, as I said, they first, the first lap they went out sub five minute pace, which is well below their C time. So um, we're probably gonna see them slowing down. But when you get to these longer races, um, the, the key really is, is pacing. You know, if they are capable of running a 530 going out and 75 seconds which is five minutes is going to be too fast we will be slowing down so they went through in about 238 so we slowed down to about 83 on that lap so it's a pretty big slowdown of eight seconds and we'll probably continue to see that the better runners will be able to maintain a more even pace now the boys shot put his finished up Girls will be, actually all the shop might have finished up. 19 competitors listed for the boys. The girls had four. And we'll see what's going on with that in a moment. Get you the results for the shot put. Again, each circuit around this track is 400 meters. So this will be a four lap race. Go ahead for the second of four here. We're coming through the third lap here and um, start spread out a lot. So number couldn't quite one. Couldn't quite catch the bib number on that. I um, thought I said ten, but it doesn't. That doesn't add up. So they're at four oh five. It's a Butler runner in first. It's either Wagner or Marion. Oh, the. Um, oh, oh, unless no, unless they're going by this. That's a wrong number. Yeah, so. Oh well, let's get the trusted binoculars out to see if we've got going on here down the back stretch. Ruckus going on here in the press box. You're also now starting to see everybody spread out in this 1600 meter race. 
Well, he's gonna, this, the winner's going to come through well under their C time. Actually, I'm not sure where we're seeing that which is Bar That was Ryan Barry wearing the number 11 there. Okay, well, yeah, 545 seed. He's well, gonna be well below that. Second here is Luke Marion out of Butler. Following him up is Tyler Wagner. And Marstown Beard's William Kuppenheimer is in fourth as they finish up here. So, heat number one is finished. And now that we understand what they're, how they're being numbered, we can go with it from there. The, by the way, the shot put is done. The girls shot put. Baker Carroll finished in fourth with a 21-6. Rochelle Morell out of Madison finished third with a 21-10. Actually tied for second with Alexander Jeffrey, who also had a 21-10 and a half. Both of them did. But 31-7 for Maggie Chinadurai. First place there for the girls' shot put. So section two is getting uh, just went off, and uh, this is going to be C times between 507 and 520. They've also, by the way, announced the uh, girls 400 meter winners, and no surprise, Jessica Vespasiano wins that one with a 104.33 officially. Maya Lee of Chatham, a 106.04, got second. Just a shade ahead of Gabrielle Bruns, who ran a 106.46. Ella Spino, 106.81, finished fifth. And Vanya Gould, 106.88, rounds out the top five. We'll get boys shot put numbers through in a moment. And then we'll have, I believe, interviewers upstairs. So this heat went through, it looks like, in about 63. A little fast again. You guys are getting a little excited. Or maybe just trying to warm up. As they go down the back straightaway again. Starting to settle into a pace. Want to remind everybody, if you're a track fan, we will be broadcasting this and other dual meets in the spring Mars County Championships and Relays here on Mars Sussex Sports. So please subscribe to our channel. Like the track coverage that we got going on here. Click the notification bell. We're not going to make Vincenzo do the selfies today. Looks like John Sutton in first here. Sutton bringing it home here. Halfway through in about 2.20. As they'll go around one more time. Got a seat time of 507. As they're coming through, we can tell you the boys' shot put results have now come in. Tyler Girth wins it with a toss of 54, nine and a half. And it's coming down the stretch here in the boys' 1600. John Sutton taking care of business. Go, 
Down the home stretch. Tyler Girth got the 54, nine and a half. Thomas White, by the way, second out of Chatham, a 42, one and a half. And Jacob Adera of 34-10 coming in third. We'll give you all the results in a bit. Bell lap here for the 16. If he could hold this together, he could break five minutes, be well below his seed time. Breaking five minutes is always a big, big goal for a lot of these runners. He's running strong down that back's John Sutton. He's going to break five. This comes around for the final run down the stretch. It's been John Sutton's heat here. Clearly had the best seed time coming in of all the runners, and he will. He's going to beat a seed time by a good 10 plus seconds. Yeah, he's going to obliterate it. Somebody's bib number six is laying on the track. A couple of them are, actually. I feel like it's about a 4.56. Great time. First sub five so far of the meet. Third place is going to end up being Tyler Spillane as he's coming in. And the rest of the field follows suit. So we got the final heat of the mile coming up. More of the 16. 1600, sorry. <laughs> They're not the same. <laughs> The uh, fastest seed of Section 3 or, is from Brian Bowler. This will be his f second race. He did run a mile, 1,600, sorry, earlier this week in trainers. He's coming off of an injury. Um, and he's running this, his twin brother. We'll see who can uh, push one to the other. I was told by their coach that one day Colin Bowler did 1,000 push-ups. I'm sorry, he did 1,001. Brian only did 1,000. So Colin's got the edge in the push-ups. Will he have the edge in a mile? There's 1,600. No There's no way I'm doing 1,000. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Chances are slim and none, and Slim's walking out the door. So Colin and Brian are, are twins. Eric Ackerman is out there as well. We've got eight people lined up, so two are scratching. We'll see how this one will head on off. I think we could see a sub 430 today. Boys will get going. Last race here, and then the girls' turn. Two sections of the girls before we get to what's going to be the fastest ones, the boys' 200-meter dashes, boys' and girls' side of things. And they've gone off. I feel like it's going to be the, the, the best race we've got going on so far, maybe today. Some good competition. So early stages of this one, and again, pacing as you had mentioned.
Glad you can join us here on Mars Sussex Sports for this coverage of the Polar Bear Invitational AM session. There will be a PM session coming up later. Brett Luthner, Gary Rosenberg here. George Muha is going to have in, uh, interviews coming up shortly. Vincenzo Sebastiano doing air traffic control. This is going to be an interesting usual. one because these guys are going out very slow. They're on pace for five minutes. So we'll see what happens in the second half of this race. This almost has the feel of it being a strategically run race and waiting for someone to make their first move before everybody else follows suit. Starting to pick up a little bit. As they are going down the back stretch, looking at some of the comments. And again, we thank you for all the positive feedback here on our YouTube channel, Mars Sussex Sports. We invite you to like this. We invite you to subscribe to the Mars Sussex Sports page because we're going to be doing more track and field uh, here in the, uh, we call season three now uh, with this crazy COVID schedule we have. And of course, the spring meets as well here on Mars Sussex Sports. There's our first move ahead. It's Brian Bowler. It looks like they heard I said they were going to break 430. They decided they didn't want to do that. Yep. Brian we're now Bowler on uh, it, yeah. seven. So they went 75-70. So we're starting to pick it up. And who is that in second from Madison? It must be Adam. Probably Adam and Angelone. So I believe runner in the uh, race. Brian, who is in first or second right now, went through his 800 on Wednesday in 220 and closed in 213. He went this time through in 225. So will he close in 205? Oh, he's got. These guys are battling and yeah. they have a long way to go. This is going to be a good race. It's turned into a two person race. And now pulling ahead is Brian Bowler. He's looking strong. So let's see what they front run this third lap in. Uh, Ryan about Be 65. So we've got 75, 70, 65. Ryan Beagle running third right now, although he might have company. And in the meantime, up in the lead, Brian Bowler pulling away. His brother's moving into third. That's Colin Bowler. That is a battle for third going on right now. I think they're going to be battling for second. Ryan Beagle of Chatham. I think the fight now is for second. Yeah, because they are starting to catch up to Adam Angelone. But coming out of the turn, it's Brian Bowler. The favorite in this one is going to take this one home, and now the only question is, is will he, what will his finishing time be? I know he wanted to break 427 today. He did not do that. His brother's going to take second. So he's looking about uh, 433. Second place is going to be uh, 38. Beagle will get third. Angelo in fourth. And then the rest of the field starts to come out. Eric Ackerman coming in as well. Angelo put a big battle in there, trying for three laps. It was good effort. Next time we'll be able to probably help hold up a little longer. One more to finish through, but we'll throw it on upstairs to George Muha. Probably number one. All right, we're here. George Muha here. We're at the Polar Bear Invitational in Chatham, New Jersey. We're filming a lot of the running events, but we, behind us, it, what was, is not in our camera view, is the shot put. And I'm here with our shot put champion of the day, um, our friend 
Tyler Girth, yeah. who uh, who took it, took it, you know. And uh, congratulations, Tyler, and also with Coach Bob Fulton of Par Hills here. So uh, listen, first of all, Tyler, congratulations. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, coming into this meet, first of all, it's great to be out here, right? First of all, this is the first time track. This is winter track, so first yeah. time you've been out here, correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's been like. I think over 370 days since my last meet. So this was a, a big moment for me. Yeah. So actually, you know, you, that's right. So you didn't have any spring events last no. year. Um, you had you had win a winter season, but you know, coming into this season, did you know? You know and also, this is technically winter, but we're outside, <laughs> right? So a little bit different. So what what was it like, kind of coming into this? You know, expectation wise, did you feel like you were gonna uh, come in in good shape to to take to take today? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think. Throughout the summer and the winter, I was practicing really hard and training for this moment. And so there was definitely some jitters because, again, this was the first time throwing in such a long time. Um, but I was just ready to strike it. And so that's kind of the mentality I had for today. So, uh, and Bob, listen, you know, you've been a coach for a long time at Par Hills. And, you know, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're coming in, you got, a, you got a big hammer in your lineup. What's, what's that like for you heading into the spring, knowing that you have someone that can compete at a high level and, and maybe even the meet of champions in a couple couple months too? Yeah, like, like Tyler spoke before, it's been 370 days, uh, you know, since he threw. And actually it was the meet of champs last year where he threw. And that was indoor at uh, Ocean Breeze in, in, in New York. And, uh, you know, Tyler and I knew that, um, you know, I told him, I said, Tyler, you're pe competing with the big guns last year. I said, now it's your turn. All right. You know, I said, you were there, you're playing with them. I said, now it's for you, you know, to put your nose to a grindstone and, and work hard and practice and lift some weights. And, and, you know, he was ready. He was ready. Yeah. Now, Tyler, now you're heading to Brown next year from a family of, uh, Really great athletes. Your brother is at Lehigh, and your sister's throwing for Fordham. Your brother's at Lehigh playing football. Your yeah. sister's at Fordham. You know, what, what's that like looking forward to getting to that next level and playing at a high level in the Ivy Leagues? Yeah, uh, I'm really excited for that. I think um, there's such good competition in the Ivy League, and just in college in general, it's such a, like a, a sport of camaraderie, and they all have so much fun, and so I'm really excited for that. Yeah, that would be great. Well, listen, first of all, congratulations on today, and we're going to see you in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. We're going to be broadcasting all these, so uh, get, used to your, get used to interviewing, okay? <laughs> I hope so. All right. All right. And listen, we'll cut it back to the race. We're actually in the girls' 1600 right now. They're racing, so we're going to pan back to that. And, again, congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're back to the track. We are in the first section of the girls' 1600, and – don't have a time going. Okay. We do have a time going, sorry. We're a little behind on this time. We have four out of the nine people who are set scheduled to race in this meet or in this race sorry we come around we'll see if you can figure out who is in first right now looks like chloe graham in first from morris knowles and carolina kedzierska in second from morris knowles and then we got Annalise Hag, Haig, and Lauren Sinski from Pequonic. Two laps in. <clears throat> Here we have still the first heat of the two. Girls, 1,600 meters. Halfway through lap three. And the second one will be the faster of the times. Much. Lindsay Bresnahan, the fastest seed time coming into this one. So 
We got Chloe still in the lead, coming up with a lap to go. Chloe Graham from Morris Knowles. Three Morris Knowles runners. The top three, Annalise Hag is in third. Second was Carolina Kadzierska. Lauren Sensky wearing the number eight bib on her shoulder there from Pequonic. But this has been a spread out race. Samantha Cunha coming down as well. And again, for a lot early, early season. So they're still trying, as you said, icebreaker or rust buster. Rust buster. Or, or both. <laughs> we'll get an update on the temperature, see if it's gotten a lot warmer. Hasn't. It has. It is 39 now. Okay. Pretty much sun tanning weather. <laughs> Supposed to get into the mid to upper 40s today, so. Yesterday was 70. It would have been a beautiful oh. day for doing an indoor track meet outdoors. Yeah. Oh, if this was yesterday, forget about it. We might have been in sun tan. <laughs> we might have been putting on the lotion ourselves to get a little color. Well, there was supposed to be the first of these polar uh, polar bear meets last Saturday, but due to ice on the track, they had to cancel right. that. Yep. I guess you, when you call a polar bear meet and it's winter track, it's expected. As this one finishes up. We'll soon get the second heat going. They have to wait for all competitors to cross the finish line. And then we'll get started with heat number two. Again, we want to thank you for watching here on Mars Sussex Sports. We please ask that you like this page as we'll have the PM session coming up later. And then, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mars Sussex Sports here. Click the notification bell so you always know when we are broadcasting. Here on Mario Sussex Sports, we will have plenty of track meets coming up. Probably, I would imagine there's going to be some wrestling meets as well. And that's all before the spring sports get into gear. We'll have spring track, we'll have baseball, we'll have softball. So we're in the second of, of two sections of the girls' 1600. And again, you see our sponsors up in the top right. We thank all of them for being part of this here today. Looks like we have six out of nine. It's gonna be hard to tell right now who is not running or who is running, I should say. Mm -hmm. Their numbers are away from us, so we'll get them on the rebound, if you will. For those wondering, the boys' 1,600 meters, both 1,600 meters, they had a new record set in the previous time they ran. Well, in previous times, I should say. 2018 had a double break. Jack Stanley out of Mendham ran a 421.90. That beat the old record by under a second, but Julia Trethaway demolished Claudia DeSoma's record from 2011 by just about a full six seconds. Now we're 
underway with this second and final heat in the girls' 1600. State record holder Josette Norris had a tennis fly back in 2013 at the tournament of champion at the meet of champions, I should say. A four forty one sixty one. She just ran a meet a week ago, qualifying for the Olympic trials in the five thousand. New Jersey's had some tremendous athletes in athletics, if you will, track and field. For a small state, we've got a lot of good runners. Absolutely. We're going to mention one of them in the uh, in the uh, girls' 200 in a bit. Should have mentioned her in the girls' 400 as well, but we'll get there in a bit. By the way, an interesting note, when I was going back and looking at previous records, the when I said the boys' 800 meters, John Marshall did yeah. it 30 years ago. It was actually at the... Uh, 40 years ago. 40 years ago, yeah. <laughs> 40 years ago, wow. I was six years old when he did that, jeez. Um, he ran it at the um, Pan Am Juniors. It was up in Canada. And I looked in at the, on the same day, at the same meet, were names like Ben Johnson and Carl Lewis. That could be. No, they were. Yeah. I was just like, I was blown away by it. What's amazing is that um, that is still the state record 40, 41 years later. Right. Um, we've had a lot of good runners come close, but they haven't been able to beat it. No one's gotten the 148.44. And there's, uh, on the on the girls' side in the 800, there is uh, a thing too, a thing Mo, who is at uh, freshman at Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. She just broke the indoor collegiate 800 record running 158 which is faster than the outdoor record right as a freshman she broke the world under 20 world record it's and go around again by the way the boys 1600 meter record chris marco of tom's river south back in 2012 another state tournament um and he got it 407.31 so I believe some of these records are, depending on what we're looking at, like the 407 was the state meet record. Right. Because the state record is under four. Yep. Oh, no, wait. I know. The, the, Sometimes the meet records, there, there are a few meet records. Some of these distances weren't run in other polar bears. I'm probably telling I you. Get, uh, well, inside. if we're going by polar bears, inside's going to be a little different, yeah. too. Yeah. Plus, so. it probably wasn't the first race of the season. Right. They, they probably had several under the belt. Yeah. So. But going by what? <laughs> we'll go by we'll go by the outdoor indoor records. All of these right. records, everything today is a new record. Yeah. So if we it, got if this is an indoor meet going outdoors, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've got three here. Um, a lot of these whoever sets the record here it'll be a meet record. Whoever wins it I should say. So you got Most one lap of these. to go. They are running about 5.30-ish pace. It's around the outside now. That's Chelsea Cochran moving in the first. Lindsay Bresnahan came in with the best seed time. Chelsea Cochran, for her part, came in with the third best seed time. Her sister was a state champion about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Runs in the family, no pun intended. Uh, their whole family runs. Every few years you see another one of them out there. So now coming around. Chelsea Cochran. Although here comes Ooh, the sprint on battle. the outside. Here's Bresnahan. Lindsay Bresnahan trying to catch. Will she do it? No, not going to have enough. Cochran will hold on to win this one. Uh, 432. Uh, sorry, 532. 
So we've got two events left, the Boys and Girls 200 and the Boys and Girls 4x800. No 3200 today. But a good finish to the race there. As it looked as though that Lindsay Bresnahan was going to make her move and, and get in there, but she waited a little too long. Do you think she would have had enough in the tank to overtake her if she maybe did it coming around the back? You the, never the know. West it looked like Chelsea was holding back a little bit, but you never know. That's the one thing when you, when it, you put your kick in and you miss, you mm. wonder if I just went a little earlier, but it's very painful. And so that concludes the girls' 1600. Boys 200 meter dash will be coming up. And they're starting over there. What do we got over there? We got 12 sections. And for those out there that you know, have not followed track, but maybe follow horse racing, this is almost like a four furlong race. Right, furlong is 200 meters, right? There you go. 300 would be a six furlong. But they don't have the starting shoot over there like they do on this side. That you see a lot of American racetracks have. I'm going to guess that they're not allowing people to use starting blocks because you would mm. expect to see starting blocks for the, the 55 hurdles and expect to see them for, for the 200. Yeah. First batch going. Lanes two, three, four, and five are all being used. Oh, check that one of them's not. Looks like two, three, and four. As they come out, <coughs> Brian Huang, Ian Tran, and Abhinav Naidu going, and it's going to be Huang taking the lead here. Looks like all Parsippany Hills. Okay, I'm sorry, and I knew it wasn't Michael Holden was, so all Parsippany Hills, you are correct. These heats are going to come quickly. Trying to see if there is something put in on starting blocks by the I think it's governor. there's such a long time to get the starting block set up for each person. Mm -hmm. Since they're unique, they don't want to take up the time, keep the meat moving. Speaking of moving, <laughs> Christopher Farman of West Morris is moving. Yeah. And he is going to beat out Ryan Harper in this race. Ryan Harper from Del Barton, Sebastian Hill from Pequannock, Christopher Farman from West Morris, and Mateo Torres from Pequannock in that heat, I believe. Oh, there's a butler in there, so never mind. Kevin Herrera was in that race instead. Now in this. Dude, the race officials are doing a great job keeping this meet moving. Yeah. There's not a very long delay between each of these heats.
Just moving it right along. Round they go five in this race. And in lane six, Sebastian Viegas. Oh no, he gives way. That's a long stride out John of lane Shelley. four. And John Shelley, and he'll come across the line first. Viegas second, and it looked like it was Max Steinberg getting third. a and R express in the chat, watch out for Cameron Dupree Kemp. You know, we, we saw his speed earlier, so. But we thank, we thank everybody in the comments for continuing to provide the positive commentary here. Patrick Natale is especially putting in there. Congrats to all the runners, win the day, yeah. I'd say they're winning the day right now. Wes Morris with a time of five minutes, thirty-two point three eight seconds. This is a Chelsea. This guy looks like he's moving. Uh, he is from Del Bar. Definitely moving in so lane Paul number four. Mattiola. Paul Mattiola just flying. You can see the effort on his face as he comes across. Mattiola will get first, and it looks like it's Zachary Leander getting second in this heat. Also running that one, Liam McDermott. And the next heat steps up. They'll move quickly around these parts. Do we have six in this one? We do. Looks like we're filled up. Patrick O'Callaghan in lane one. Henry Nyer in lane two. Jaden Roney in lane three. Alexander Diaz in lane four. Matthew Young in lane five. And Braden Loeffler in lane six. Del Barton, Del Barton, Mars Catholic. West Mars, Parsippany Hills, Mars Knowles. By school representation from lanes one through six respectively nearly a false start but we're all good and that's lane five <laughs> matthew young who's gotten out quickly as they round the turn young has got some comp uh, competition alexander diaz and there goes diaz diaz motoring roney trying to catch him but will not do so there's your one two Lawful Young, Nair O'Callaghan to round, or O'Callaghan Nair should say to round things out. Uh, thank you, Lisa Giannotti. No start blocks due to COVID. People touching them can't disinfect. Oh, that's what she's that's... heard, but that would make complete sense. Well, then what about the batons and the relay? Well, that's going to be a fun one. <laughs> Are they going to wipe them down between each one? Maybe they just slap hands. Well, no, I think with the baton, it's easier to wipe them down. I think those are easier to wipe them down if the team has their own baton. That's great. If it's if they have their own team is safe, they're good. Yeah. Got four in this heat as we are underway. And lane one. It's the shortest one on the track in lane three is Ed Malinowski. Him and Gabriel Benz in lane one are going to duel it. Malinowski and Benz. Malinowski and Benz. It'll be Malinowski. It's a good time. Burden Hyatt. Looks like about a 26 out. seconds. Where's that Levine out there? There's Levine out there as well. Zach Levine, number in that from Arstown Beard. Yeah, the other two runners in that race were Zach Levine in lane six, Hogan Hyatt in lane five. Sam Bird not in the race. Next up, looks like only two in this one. Both Knowles, maybe? No. I don't think, at least. Is it lane four or five? Yeah, it looks like they're green and white, so I'm, in the, I'm guessing this is Adele Barton in there. Oh, we got another uh, Butler in there. Oh, didn't see that Butler play. So you got <laughs> Staggered starts. Jake Donza in one. 
That's a Del Barton. Yeah, then we've got That's one uh, five six going on like here. Gregory Palma and Anthony Implicito. And right now it's gonna be Implicito steaming ahead. Placido, Palma, and Danza to round it out. And now we go to heat number eight. You see the relay team starting to gather on the, inf on the football field, if you will. The infield, the official term. So we're in section eight. Four, five, or six, you know, five to the start. Good start by all. Lane one's already made it to Stagger. And flying past Stagger, Kyle Hunt. One of our own here, Kyle Hunt, Amar Sussex Sports. Guy and Kyle Hunt motoring forward. Will he be caught on the outside Ooh, though by shit by Presty? Hunt and Presty down the stretch. It'll be Ooh. Hunt by a little bit. And George Muha, the Grand Muha, is a happy camper. <laughs> Kyle Hunt, having been one of our own here. Um, Mars Sussex Sports helping us out with broadcast in the past. And uh, he, it was close down the stretch as Robert Presty made things interesting, but Hunt held on for the victory in that heat. But there's some other, there's still four more to go, and these are the faster times coming soon. Four, excuse me, four to the line for this one. I'd say to the blocks, but there are no blocks. It's like uh, Madison in lane three. Oh, yeah. That's uh, Eric Selquist going. Selquist, although he's got company now. James Iorio. Will Selquist hold on? He realized the challenge was there. Here goes Iorio, and it'll be Selquist to finish it. So we got a couple more to go. Three more heats now. Five to the line here. Lane two, I believe, is the open lane. William Hagerstrom. On the inside out of Madison High School has got himself uh, in high gear. On the outside, it's Thomas Highland. But Hagerstrom will take this one. <clears throat> and possibly put himself in consideration for a top five finish with that run. I didn't see how about how fast they're running. I think you're going to be a 20, 25 or under. Mm. Top five. We got the stream going on as well, so we'll see what it came in at. So we're at 24. Second, the penultimate seed or heat going off. This has got six. Ethan Cho in lane one. Tanae Mala in lane two. Del Barton and Chad Mars Knowles has Cameron Dupree Kemp in lane three and Kirk Steinhilb in lane four. Michael Keller from Madison in lane five and Kevin Conover of Mars Knowles in lane six. And the chat has said, we'll watch out for Cameron Dupree Kemp. A&R Express in the chat has said so. And I don't think they're far off on this one. They are motoring around Kemp, dealing with Steinhilb. Kemp and Steinhilb, will Steinhilb hold on? I think so. Kemp, with all his might, just not gonna catch him. 
Kemp's got to hold on to second in his heat. It's about 24 seconds. And now Keep in mind, all of our times are unofficial on this. Right. Final heat here in the boys 200 meter. Danny Johnson, the state record 20.93, set back in 2001 the, on June 6th, <laughs> right around state tournament time. Two standing starts for lanes three and four, Christopher DeMore, Chris DeMore and Sebastian Hughes as we get going. Spencer Anderson on in the inside. Will he get going? Lane one's open. They come around. Damore in the lead. Damore being challenged by Matthew Sales on the outside. Aiden Bergen in there as well, but it's going to be Damore across the line. A pretty well run race all the way around there. Don't forget, we do have the afternoon session coming up. That's scheduled to start at 1 p.m. We have full coverage here on Mari Sussex Sports. We hope that you come back and join us then. Vincenzo Sebastiano, our producer, gave me the affirmative nod. Now it's time for the girls' 200 meter. The state record set just a couple of years ago by the great Sydney McLaughlin. She's got the girls' 200 and 400 meter records, and the f and intermediate hurdles. Mm hmm. Uh, she's got so many records in the state. Does Sydney McLaughlin? Well, she has run the second fastest ever hurdle intermediate hurdles uh, in the world. 22.96 is the state record, set back on June 3rd, 2017. This is going to be basically a, an inter-squad Morris Knowles race going off here. Yeah. With potential Pequannock in here, too. Megan DeVink in lane six. Is she there? Otherwise, it's an, uh, an inter-squad. I don't see lane six open. So, Samantha Koo, lane one. Angelina Petreska in lane two. Megan Brady in lane three. Ashley Allison, four. And Caitlin Walter, five. Morris Knowles across the board. bragging rights, if you will. Emma Kosorowski will be running in the second heat. Otherwise, it really would have become all Morris Knowles, top to bottom. They're off, and well, that's a big start for Megan Brady. Coming around to lane three, Megan Brady is well ahead of her teammates on this one. Now the question is, is what is Megan Brady going to post? First call, boys and girls four by eight. Please report. 29. 29 and change for Brady. That's about 10 seconds faster than her seed. Brady's seed was, uh, well, no, no. Bragan's seed was 36, so seven seconds faster. But still, that's a that's a significant jump. By the way, the results are in from the sixteen hundreds. We'll get to him after this heat, which uh, looking at it might be full. Looks like lane five might be open. Oh, yeah, you may have a point there, yeah. Lane five. Emma Kosorowski, Kosorowski, I should say, in lane one. Grace Kugelman, two. Morris Knowles, Parsippany Hills, and then another Parsippany Hills, Leon Lombardi in three. Anya Sadowski, Parsippany Hills in four, and Anna Kugelman, lane six. 
So this is a Parsippany Hills intra squad, with the exception of the Mars Knowles invasion of Kosciuszowski. Again, I apologize if I'm pronouncing any of these names wrong. <clears throat> While we're waiting, boys 1,600 meters. Brian Bowler got that top time of 435.17. Colin Bowler, his twin brother, got second at 440.55. Ryan Beagle, 442.57, came in third. Adam Angelone at 444.12 is fourth. And rounding out the top five, Alexander Crack at 446.36. Eric Ackerman, sixth at 447.23. On the girls' 1,600-meter side, Chelsea Cochran held off Lindsey Bresnahan, 532.38 to 532.61. That's how close those two were. Miley McDonough, 544.84, got third. Sophia Danzo at 550.61. Those are the sub-six-minute times. Chloe Graham at 601.66, rounding out the top five. Cameron Grant, sixth. At 6.03.52. Still awaiting the start of this second heat. What could possibly be the delay? It's usually the timing combination. Well, just when we say that, we're here on the, yep, there we go. Five is open. Lane one is flying, and that's Emma Kosciuszowski. Around the around the corner there, and Kosciuszowski is just flying ahead. Across the line in 28 and change. So now it's on to section three, or heat three, if you will. <clears throat> Five scheduled to be in, but it looks like four are in. I believe lane five is, oh no, there's five in there, never mind. So you got Marion Earl in lane one, Sonali Sastry, Sonali Sastry in lane two. That's Mars Catholic and Parsippany Hills. Pequonics, Kaylee Philhauer in lane three. Butler's Jordan Valentin in lane four. And Teresa Iorio from Pequonic in lane number five. They're off and off in lane four that time. Jordan Valentin got a real good start. However, she's got company in the form of Kaylee Philhauer. Two of them are going to have ourselves a little bit of a sprint down this stretch. Valentin and Philhauer. Valentin and Philhauer still in fit. Valentin's going to hold on. Good race out of those two. But Jordan Valentin... Edges out, Kaylee Philhauer. Now, as all these times start coming in, it, it stands reason to believe that in future meets, they, these times are going to carry over in, in terms of, of uh, their seed times. Yeah, the more races they run, the better they'll be able to seed themselves. No, it's not like a it's not like a handicap in golf, although it is ever changing. <laughs> well, it the the meets where they need to submit an official seed time mm. is always the best. Otherwise, people will lie just to get in a faster seed. Right. So I 
three to the line in this one. Lanes two, four, and five, if I'm reading it correctly. Looks like, uh, was that all Morristown Beard? Or is that Madison? Madison. All Madison. Well, it would have been four out of five Madisons anyway, but. Gracella Dressler in lane two, Emma Torkelson in four, Kate Brea in lane five. All submitting seed times between 32.6 and 32.9. As they come down here, and this looks as though it's going to be Torkelson pulling ahead. And Torkelson will finish in first in this heat. Six step to the line here for this one. Gabriella, Gabrielle Bruns in lane one. Baker Carroll in lane two. Alyssa Patain in lane three. Samantha Fieldhouse in four. Anna Giannotti in five. And Samita Satish in lane six. Madison Chatham Parsippany. Butler and Paramars Catholics. Even start, but then on the inside in lane one, Gabrielle Bruns is turned it on. Bruns coming around and well ahead of the rest of the field. Gabrielle Bruns running a real good time here. Will she keep it? What's the final? Looks around 28, 28. low 28s for Bruns. Three heats left before we get to the relays that will finish out the morning session. Five on the line for this one. Final call. All boys and girls. Lane six is open. Kaya Sam Martin in lane one and from Parsippany. Mars Catholics, Kirsten Holdup in two. Ang Allison Angley in West Morris in lane three. Chloe Higgins, Marstown Beard, lane four. Callie Rappaport, lane five from Butler. Got ourselves a lane two jump out here for Kirsten Holdup. Holdup going down. She'll win this one. And Chloe Higgins will claim second in this heat. Now you start to see whether or not some of these from these heats sneak up to the top five. Well, a lot of these seed times are not that far away, so it really comes down to if they were seated in the right heat. But these last two heats are all, everybody's seated at 28 or faster. Six out of six in this one. Phoebe Patterson from Pequannock in lane one. Narina San Martin from Parsippany in two. Ella Spina out of Chatham in three. Jessica, Jessica Vespasiano in four. She Chatham as well. Elizabeth Her in five out of Chatham. And Kyra Hoffman in West Morris out of six. And as this pack comes around... And down the stretch, it is lane four of Jessica Vespasiano. Vespasiano pulling away, trying to keep up with Kyra Hoffman, won't, able, won't be able to do so. Vespasiano crosses first in about 27. Unofficially, of course. As they all get sorted out, the final Oh, hey, look at this here. The Grand Muha brought something from Pascarella Brothers. Aye. Which means after all this, we're going to be munching. By the way, if you follow and DM Pascarella Bros on Twitter, you'll receive a 10% discount on your next order Monday through Friday only, not valid Saturday and Sunday. So. Follow, follow and DM them at Pascarell Bros and then get there during the week. Last one here. 
Luis Panagakos, Lauren Clark, Sophia Lally, Lee, Maya Lee, all out of Chatham. Vanya Gould out of Mars Catholic. Looks like Sophia out there in the lead. Yes, that Pretty is. Sophia Lally, and she'll come across first with uh, 26. 26. And that'll be the best time here of the girls' 200 meters. <laughs> One left in terms of running, and that is the four by 800 meter relay. We got two sections of the boys with uh, three of them being Parsippany, Parsippany Hills. Yeah. They Just, might be combining, we're told. Yeah, so yeah, we, we will see for sure. <laughs> Four by 800 meter, the state record. Morris Hills. Morris Hills. They set it at the Penn Relays back on April 25th, 2009. They broke the national record but came in second. Yes, that year. Yeah. That, that, that meet, they came in second, which is crazy to think. The second fastest time in the nation. That was a very exciting race. And it wasn't that far off either. They will get going on this one <coughs> in a bit. All right, one section down so to just one section. One section. Looks like a lot of people must have scratched because I'm only seeing four teams. So section one was supposed to have three different Parsippany teams, Butler and Pequannock. Section two was going to have Chatham, Madison, Mars Catholic, Mars Knowles, and Del Barton. <coughs> that obviously is changing. I think the coaches are tired of being out in the cold. They should just combine this into one. I mean, this afternoon section is going to be really warm. We're up to 41 degrees here. So just think about this. That 731.60 was just a second behind Albemarle out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Came down to the last 100 or so meters in that race. Well... Vincent Chusiano and Garrett Bradley ran a practically identical. In fact, Chusiano is two tenths ahead. Uh, Zach Verhovac caught Lucas Clive and passed him. Only for Sean Poharence <coughs> of Mars Hills the, the, so passed Sean, Luke Noble. Sean Poharence was a 3,200-meter state champion dropping down to the 800 to run a 153. Oops. Which is fast on its own, but to be yeah. one of the slowest times on their and their heat or in their relay, I should say. And Liam Tanzi, one fifty sixty five, was beat out by Anthony Costalax, one forty nine thirty three. <coughs> that was a that was a and good that team. was the race right there. That Morris Hills team had two state champions and one third place, so they are pretty solid. I guess you got to be if you're gonna run that fast. Yeah. So we have five teams in this four by eight. By the way, since then, before we get there, I'm sorry about that. Um, the national record since has been beaten. Polly out of Long Beach, California, has got the record nationally at 728.75. Which is crazy because that could beat a lot of good college Division One teams. Got Chatham's Chatham got the lead. the lead with Mars Knowles second, Pequannock third. There's only one girls four by 800 meter relay final as well. There's four teams in that, so.
Again, two laps for each around this track. For each runner, eight laps total. And right now, Chatham, Patrick Grosso, Charles Henney, Alexander Crack, and Ryan Beagle are listed as the first four up. Okay, Parsippany Hills in is, is in this thing. So Chatham's taking a commanding lead here. Yeah. Probably come through in about a 208. Morris Knowles with Will Burke, Max Capallo, Braden Bruseo, and Tom Carney. Tyler Spillane also listed. That's about a 208, 209 first leg. <clears throat> Ever important, the exchange of a time. This lead for Chatham is lengthening. Coming around the scoreboard turn here for the first of two laps for this leg. Charles Henning for Chatham out in front. Morris Knowles right now in second. Looks like Parsippany's got third. Pequonic fourth right now. And well, uh, couldn't make out who that is. In is that West Morris? That's not West Mars, they're not here. Couldn't make out that logo, but either way, here's the second go around for these competitors. Nothing's changing in positions here. Modern Acupuncture, Florham Park. Their mission is to make your life better. Text go flow to 89000 to get a free acupuncture treatment today. Nothing has changed in this one. Chatham well in front. So Chatham's first leg was around a 208. Looks like their second leg is going to be about 217. Parsippany Hills coming through. Catholic, I believe, that last one. And you can hear that. got some, some change going on here now. Yeah, that is an overtake, that's why. Oh, it's not Morris Catholic either. There is Morris Catholic, I'm sorry. Morris Catholic only listed three on their sheet here uh, for this one, but... In the meantime, Chatham well out in front. <clears throat> and you're still hearing the cheering going on down below. Is Morris Catholic right now in fourth? Come up to the final handoff. 
everybody's now ready and in line, but this is Chatham's race. about a 214 for Chatham's third person. Morris Knowles on the handoff now. I don't think we're gonna see a whole lot of changing in places on this no. last last leg. Chatham well out in front. Uh, it's uh, it's a good 60 meter lead I'd figure. Barring, barring it, any anything unforeseen, any mishaps, this is. Uh, in fact, uh, that's a, that's a lap right there. Chatham overtaking Pequannock. Runner gets the, the choice of lane. Bell lap, Quantic will get their handoff going. But Chatham well out in front here in the boys' four by 800 meter relay. This one comes around. Not as much of the suspense as you would no. have in, in, in the uh, quicker sprints. Yeah, four by four would have been more, a little, maybe a little more exciting to watch or at least more competition. But right. Looks like this uh, Chatham guys are probably going to run about a 206, 207. It's a nice finish. They're lapping um, fifth place. They were actually, that's fourth place. That's uh, Mars Catholic fourth in fourth, place. yeah. Oh, they're in lap, lap fifth. Pair, yeah. yes. Chatham comes across with a, an a, 8.47 about. Looks like he ran about a 2.08. Here comes Knowles for second. Knowles might get a lap on Quanic. Nope, not going to happen. A 9.02 for second, and then uh, the rest of the field will finish out, but... Uh, and Chatham with an excellent, excellent race there. They came in there. Their seed time, Chatham, was an 8.45. So they finished right behind. They averaged about a 2.12. Right, <clears throat> and you're still hearing the support going on. As they're now reading off back. the final numbers. The boys 200 meter. Christopher DeMore got burst through the 23-3. You're, you're seeing, look at this, the Mars Catholic track members here. The girls are cheering on their guys to finish. Oh, we might catch we might have a little be closer here. at the end. Uh, it will... Ooh. Pequannock might have gotten there at the end. Oh, look at that. From that angle, it's hard to say. Yeah. Good job the, by Vincenzo on that. Quantic. Last got, one in the morning session coming up. We got two, two in this heat, two in the final heat. Oh. Looks like Knowles and not sure, maybe Wes Morris or Chatham. One of the two. We'll see as they come around the first time. Too many do, blue teams. We, we do know you, Navy Blues. Yeah. Be able to figure it out in a moment. We do know Knowles is in there. Annalise Hogg, Carolina Kedzierska, Chloe Graham, Nicole Nash, Emily Stevenson, Miley McDonough, all listed. So we're not sure which ones will be getting the handoff per se. 
So these guys are going out like it's a four by four. By the way, boys 200 meter dash, Christopher DeMore finished with a 23-3. Matthew Sales 23-5-5 got second. Kurt Steinhilb of Morris Knowles. West Morris got first, Madison second. Morris Knowles, Kurt Steinhilb got third at a 23-8-1. Madison's A, Eden Bergen got a 23-9-6 for fourth. Spencer Anderson fifth in Morristown Beer, 24.24. And just a hundredth of a second behind Sebastian Hughes, Results sixth, 24.25. Sixth as well as, I believe, Cameron Dupree. Camp also got a 24.25. So this first leg, these two runners are going out pretty quick, hitting a 200 around 32 seconds. I think we'll be seeing the bear come out of the woods and jump on their backs sometime in the second lap. That looks like Chatham. That's Chatham. That's Chatham. So it's a Chatham v. Knowles head-to-head. -head. Chatham sending out, they got seven listed. Lindsey Bresnahan, Alexa Lee, Ashley Smith, Isabel Spagnolo, Avery Zigon, Cameron Grant, and Ava Fikidi. As you're hearing in the background, Sophia Lolly. Chatham had the top four times in the girls 200. Sophia Lolly 27.15, Lauren Clark 27.95, Jessica Vespasiano 28.24, Maya Lee 28, 20, uh, 35 I should say. Morris Knowles, Emma Kosirowski had a 28.6 and a 28.67 from Gabrielle Bruns round out the top six. But as we're seeing in that, Vespasiano was in the she was in the next to last heat. But Chatham. Panagakos finished off the pace, but Clark, Lolly, and Lee all up there with Vespasiano, who was in the previous heat. So they were all pretty much right there. First exchange coming up here, and Chatham well out in front. First leg about 2.33. The fast start might have might have gotten to Knowles a little bit there. Pascarella bro Brothers lunch awaiting some of us up here. We've gotten the thumbs up from Vincenzo that the, it is quality. So we're good there. We've always, I mean, Vinny and I had had some uh, garlic knots brought up to us once by a uh, hockey parent on um, Mount Olive, well, Mahoha as we call them, Mount Olive Hapak on Hackettstown. But um, yeah, we've been we've been blessed with some food up in the. I guess Vinny's not going to need his quick check bag then. <laughs> that, that was my go-to always. I always went to quick check before hockey games and grab some some lunch, but. We were, we were informed that Pasquarella Brothers was hooking us up today, so it's all good. Where would most of these hockey games be? At Menin? Menin Arena, yeah. A lot of them. Some of them at Skylands Ice World, but most of them at Menin. This the second leg of this relay. First of the two laps for each, and right now it just looks like a comfortable run. And they're running, each runner runs two laps. And yeah, judging by this, you're seeing some of the, you're seeing some, some people come through and whatnot. You see each team, Mars Catholic girls are holding their baton right now. So that's, that's the way it looks. It looks like each team bring their own baton and that's how they're, they're running with it. So to keep it between the team, if you got COVID on your team, you keep it on your team. Mm-hmm. And then a quick wipe down with the disinfectant, and you're good. So. Let's hope nobody has anything anyway. I am very happy to say that I have myself the card to prove that I've got two vaccines. Once I figure out where I put my wallet. <laughs> I 
as we come up on the finish of this second of four. <laughs> Important, especially if I'm going to be traveling this summer. The coveted card. The coveted card is right. And this is going to be the handoff as we're this, midway through this race. This race is still not, it's not done. You know, if Morris Knowles has a, a strong leg, they could come right back into this. But we're seeing at the tail end of each leg that the runners that are coming in are laboring a little bit. Uh, they're going out a little too fast. And they're paying for it. And now, Morris knows. You can see that that's a quick go out here, but that's going to catch up to her. Again, we don't know the exact order. We just know who's been listed. She's going to close the gap, at least on the first lap. It depends on what will happen on this second lap. Oh, well, now we've been told Ashley Smith is out there. I think it might be, I'm not even going to speculate, it might be Chloe Graham, though, on the, on the leg here. Of course, an hour from now, a little bit more than that, we will have our afternoon session of this Polar Bear Invitational. Some Pequannock racers. Gathering up some stuff. Are we going to see any change in positions on this leg? Probably not. The only question is going to be, is is there pacing going on? and Or does Morris Knowles have anything in the tank for a comeback? So often I'd imagine your first, you want your first leg to be just... Like a, a real strong, maybe your second strongest and your final leg to be your strongest I mean, if you're it piecing it together. Typically, but it depends on your strategy, but typically it's uh, slowest leg is second, fastest leg is last, and the toughest person who can bang through everybody is on the first lap, or first, <laughs> the first leg. <laughs> Sometimes you need that grinder out there. Oh, yeah. And we will have more track coverage other than just this meet here on Mars Sussex Sports. So please follow us here on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook as well. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. We got all that going on as well. And then, of course, click the notification bell and be in the know when we got live coverage of anything going on here on Mars Sussex Sports. Coming up on the last exchange here. We're going to see some fireworks in the last lap, or it's going to be the same. I believe that's Isabel Spagnolo <clears throat> taking the baton. Right now, it looks like they're averaging about 250. Check that. Alexa Lee's taking a baton. So, Lee on the last lap here for Chatham. Looks like the girl from Knowles, whoever, whoever's anchoring, she's going to see what she can do and try to catch. We'll see how long it lasts. Mm -hmm. Always get out to that hot start, and then as you round the first corner, you might just realize that's a 65-70-meter that's a uh -huh. lead here. George Muha dropping his cell phone. There'll be one more. The bell lap is coming up as they start setting the hurdles for the afternoon session. Out in front, Alexa Lee. Lap to go. There's the bell, uh, bell lap now. The bell is rung, and it looks like Lee is expanding the lead. Just 
Now crossing the line, Mar Snowles Lee for Chatham on that back straight now. Results from the boys' 4 by 800 meter relay. As you'll hear in the in background. Fifth place was Morris Catholic, the time of 10 minutes and 13 seconds. In fourth place, Baquanic, with a time of 10 minutes and 13 seconds. In third place was Parsippany Hills, with a time of 9 minutes, 45.52 seconds. In second place, Morris Knowles, with a time of 9 minutes and 2.58 seconds. And your winners from Chatham High School, team of Charlie Henney, Ryan Beagle, Alex Crack, and Leo Valenzuela, with a time of 8 minutes and 47.99 seconds. Chatham will now get the sweep of the 4x8s here as Alexa Lee across the line in what well, looks like 11 10. And it was a good 100, over 100 meters, uh, 120 meter win here. Fort Chatham over Morris Knowles. As Paquanic and West Morris Central scratched in this one. Both teams came in with a 10-20 seed time, but this was Chatham's race all the way through. And so that concludes the morning session here at Chatham High School. Uh, Gary, your thoughts about what you saw this morning? I think it was a, a good, we'll call it a good rust buster. If these are the same teams coming back here in two weeks, I'm sure we'll see a lot faster times and hopefully some warmer weather. I mean, the average temperature today was 35 degrees. It's, I guess, considering this is indoor track, um, it's expected, but not ideal for running fast. There will be more Chatham runners coming back here in the PM session. We're going to see Hanover Park, Mountain Lakes, Roxbury, more Parsippany's, uh, Parsippany runners as well. Uh, that's all coming back. And Marstown's going to join everybody here as well as Kinelon. So plenty of competition coming up here uh, in the PM session, which will be in about an hour's time here on Morris Sussex Sports. Uh, and some of the reasons we'll be seeing some of the same teams in the afternoon is because there's a limit to how many can run uh, in each session. So. If there's openings, they're going to come out. I guess with Chatham being their, their home team, they're going to have afternoon and morning. And so for our producer, Vincenzo Sebastiano, George Muha as well, uh, joining us. Uh, and for Gary Rosenberg, my broadcast partner, my name is Brett Luthner. The morning session is done. We'll see you in about an hour for the afternoon session here of the Polar Bear Invitational from Chatham High School.